um, again this uh, well this is a basic rule also contributory negligence it it does not affect the liability of so if the contribution is on the part of the carrier the carrier is liable if the negligence that contributed to the injury is on the part of the carrier the carrier is liable even if this negligence uh, concurred with the negligence of others so even if the act or omission of the employees of the carrier was not the sole cause there are concurring causes concurring negligence on the part of third persons the carrier would still be liable so if the contribution is on the part of third persons like for instance in a vehicular accident the bus rammed uh, uh, or uh, collided with another vehicle let's say a taxi or uh, a car even if the bus company can show that it was not entirely responsible for the damage of the passenger kahit pwede niyang sisihin yung nagda-drive nung, nung car the liability still arises based on contract no, hindi siya pwedeng manisi ng third persons okay so the question is what if the contributing cause what if what if the negligence is on the part of the uh, injured party, the passenger, for instance, or the shipper. The, the rule is 1741 and 1762 when it comes to passenger 1741 for goods. It is mitigating. It does not bar recovery, but it mitigates liability. That is the contributory negligence rule so long as the negligence of the carrier is the or one of the proximate causes or the damage or injury even if there is a a contributory negligence on the part of the uh, plaintiff the plaintiff can still recover but his recovery will be reduced Okay. Now, character of the goods or defects in the packing or in the containers is one of the defenses. If the damage was due to the character of the goods or defects in the packing or in the containers, then there is a defense that will bar recovery. Now, um, but this is, rule is qualified. Remember the, the rule that although the carrier can refuse to accept improperly packed uh, goods or uh, goods that are deteriorating, for instance. This is one, one of the grounds for um, refusing to accept. Um, but the carrier may opt to accept okay. and stipulate that the diligence required will be lessened or um, it must ex still exercise due diligence to minimize or to to minimize the losses even if the real proximate cause is the improper packing they must see to it that the damage will not be worsened so th that in essence is the principle regarding this uh, depends an order or act of competent authority the leading case or well there's it's the only case decided by the supreme court so far regarding this is ganson versus court of appeals so scrap metals were um, being um, uh, loaded in a, a vessel and here comes the acting mayor una yung mayor then pangalawa 
acting mayor. Medyo mga siga, pinastop yung pag-alis nung, uh, nung vessel. O, is this the competent authority uh, that is contemplated by the civil code? Obviously, these persons are incompetent. But uh, uh, the Supreme Court, incompetent, literally in the, leg and in the legal sense of the word, they have no right to stop the the vessel. A mayor cannot stop the vessel. Pwede Coast Guard siguro. Coast Guard or Marina. Kung Marina or yung Coast Guard ang nag-stop, if the Marina or Coast Guard ordered the vessel to stop loading the vessel or pre it prevented, they prevented the vessel from leaving the port, then we can say that these are competent authorities and therefore covered by the defense under the new civil code. But mayors, according to the Supreme Courts, were not competent authorities. But the, the ruling is quite controversial because of, I would say that they are, it's covered by, um, well, the dissenting opinion which contradicted the majority is quite convincing, but we, we can look at the facts not only from this point of view of this provision, but from the point of view of extraordinary diligence. Because uh, even if, um, whether it's a mayor or a rebel or anybody else who has no right, who are performing criminal acts, who prevented you from leaving or not doing your duty as a carrier, then so long as you can establish that you exercise extraordinary diligence and that these acts are beyond your control and that these acts uh, are coupled with irresistible force, kahit na yung mayor nakasama yung dalawang pulis, Siyempre, matatakot ka din dyan. It can also constitute irresistible force. And therefore, to my mind, there can be in proper cases, defenses. Uh, the defense is still available. Okay, so, so in other words, to restate, while we have to follow the ruling of the Supreme Court in Ganson v. Court of Appeals, we have to qualify that um, the other rules on fortuitous event may also apply in proper cases. If you are uh, a public official, you are no different from a rebel or a criminal who has no right to stop or prevent uh, the carrier from performing his duty. And therefore, this public official or the act of the public official or its effect will be tested in the light of the duty to exercise extraordinary diligence and the other defenses available to the carrier. Okay.